Hi, Dr. Cobb. Thank you for speaking to us today. Could you just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your role here at King's? OK, hi, I'm Andre Cobb. I'm an organic chemist in the Department of Chemistry. So it means I uh, teach quite a lot of organic chemistry and also do research into it. And one of my research interests is to developing anti-coronaviral compounds. Wow, thank you. Um, so really topical um, at the moment then. So. The reason we're talking to you today is because you've recently been awarded funding from King's to work on a project that directly involves COVID-19 research. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about this project and what's involved? Sure, so um, the project is led by Dr. Edina Roster, who's a computational chemist, and uh, she uses these supercomputer things to uh, try and uh, work out how um, a target within a, uh, within a virus will bind to a particular molecule. And so she's identified quite a few uh, different compounds, including uh, a subset that we made uh, about five or six years ago. Uh, and they all seem to be very promising in terms of their, their binding. Um, and uh, so we are going to then take these compounds, uh, myself and my PhD students are going to synthesize them in the lab, uh, and then they will be taken to testing. Firstly, by uh, Mark Sanderson at uh, the Randall, we will try and co-crystallize them with the target to see if they have good binding. Uh, and also with a virologist that I know from my previous work in, in Germany to see how effective they are. Great, thank you. Have you have you discovered anything so far? Or have you got anything that's already emerging? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, from the computational studies, uh, what the, we call them in silico because they're in the, in the computer. Uh, they have uh, turned up some very promising compounds, including those that we reported I, I mentioned. Um, and so they, those are the main kind of hard results as it is at the moment. So the, the arduous bit is making these compounds. So as I say, we've already described the synthesis of some of those, so we can do those pretty effectively. But some of the other ones um, are not so easy to make and ha haven't been made before. Uh, and so we're giving those a go as well. And what impact do you think that this research is going to have on our understanding of COVID-19, of, of coronaviruses in general, um, and also potential treatment options for people? Sure. Well, there's, there's lots of areas that this research will impact on, from really basic research through to the clinic, uh, really. I mean, the clinic realistically is a long way off. But just understanding how some of these compounds bind to the actual protein itself, Computation is one thing, but if you get a crystal, you can actually see exactly how the binding is, and that will help us develop uh, more effective compounds. So we can work out where the little gaps are that uh, that we could fill within the crystal structure. Um, so uh, it, it will impact on on our understanding of that structural biology. It will impact on our understanding of synthetic chemistry in order to make these compounds. But when you get towards the clinic side, which is that, of course the ultimate goal. Um, uh, of course, it has to go through lots of different clinical phrase, phases, so it's not necessarily going to be available for this particular pandemic. Um, but what it will do is it will give us an understanding of how uh, how the viruses respond to these compounds, um, and uh, hopefully it will give us an idea of mechanism of action as well. So it sounds like this research is really going to influence how you carry out research and what you might focus on in the future beyond this pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so th the word that I described previously, we, um, we're, we've always been had that in the background. Um, but uh, what will enable us to do is really understand how these compounds work um, and try and uh, push them forward in terms of understanding their mechanism of action. Um, and also designing a library of compounds that will allow us to really probe uh, the, the target effectively. Great, and, and ultimately prevent a virus from having such an effect on people that it does now? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I mentioned, it probably wouldn't be in time for this uh, particular pandemic, but what it will be able to uh, give us information about is, um, uh, well, what it will enable us to do is uh, to have the potential to combat new coronaviruses, because a lot of them are pretty similar. Um, and in fact, the work that we did previously was targeted at a very different coronavirus called the mouse hepatitis virus, which is a type of coronavirus. Uh, and what Adina's modelling has done is shown that these compounds are actually look as though they can be quite effective against um, a related protein to the, to the one that's uh, troubling us all now. 
Great. Well, well, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to talk to us today about your research, Dr. Cobb. Uh, and we're looking forward to hearing more as it progresses. Thank you very much.